Well, good evening. My name is Bill White. I'm the Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor Martin Tully expresses his regrets in not being here this evening. He's out of town attending to business. Um, the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll call the February 7th meeting of the Downtown Village Council to order. And before we proceed any further, let's stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, with that, I would ask our village clerk to call the roll. Commissioner Wallace? Here. Commissioner Earl? Here. Commissioner Waldeck? Here. Commissioner White? Here. Commissioner Jose? Here. Commissioner Barnett? Mayor Tully? Okay. We have five members present. That does constitute a quorum. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the minutes of council meeting from our, from our prior meeting of January 24th, 2017. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Any comments, corrections, any changes needed to be made to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the minutes are approved unanimously. Now we turn to item four, which is the first opportunity for public comment. And, the, and this first option for public comment pertains to matters that are not on this evening's agenda. I won't give you the full spiel. If you've watched these meetings before, you've heard many times how, how, how all this works. So looking out in the audience, if there's anybody here this evening that wishes to address the council on a matter not appearing on this evening's agenda, please come to the microphone, state your name and address, and we'll let us know what you have to say. Don't all rush up at once. Oh, I see the stampede already. Okay, we'll go at once, going twice. Okay, we will close the public comment portion since no one chose to step forward. With that, we turn to item five or to our agenda, the consent agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to make a comment regarding the consent agenda? Is there any member of the council that has any changes or wants to remove something from the consent agenda? Hearing nothing, I'd ask for a roll call, please. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem White? Aye. Uh, that motion passes. The consent agenda has been approved unanimously. Now we turn to item six, which is our active agenda. Um, do I have a motion to approve the ordinance listed in item six? Mayor Pro Tem, my motion to, uh, I move to Approve an ordinance amending the temporary suspension of traffic regulations as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and, and a second. Uh, since this is on the active agenda before council discusses the matter, if there's anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on this active agenda item, you can come forward to the microphone now and, um, and, and state your opinion or your position. Okay, um, for the record, no one chose to come forward. Any member, of the, any member of the council have any comments or questions about this item uh, before we ask for a vote? Going once, okay. With that, we'll call for a roll we'll, I'll, I'll ask for a roll call, please. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem White? Aye. This matter is also approved unanimously. And we're flying right through now to item seven, which is a first reading. And the first reading is an opportunity um, to, get a, to, to get a first look at an issue that will be coming up for a future vote. And what happens is the village staff will make a presentation. Then after that, members of the council will have an opportunity to discuss it or ask, ask questions about the, about the matter. And then after that, anybody in the audience that wishes to, to speak on the matter will be given an opportunity. There's lots of opportunities to, 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 to address this council. With that, I turn this over to the village manager, Dave Fieldman, and perhaps his delegate to proceed. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. We are very pleased tonight to introduce a resolution that would grant historic landmark designation to the property at 4437 Seeley Avenue. And here to present the background information on this item is our Community <coughs> Development Director, Stan Popovich. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. As Mr. Fieldman noted, this is a historic landmark application for the Pierce Downer House. The property is at 4437 Seeley Avenue, just south of Ogden Avenue, a little bit west of Downers Grove North High School. We zoom in a little bit, you can see the property here outlined in red. The uh, home was the original home of Pierce Downer, whose portrait's on the uh, wall behind uh, Commissioner White, Commissioner Earl. 
Uh, so this one is a, a pretty uh, fantastic landmark uh, designation here. Uh, everybody knows the history of about Pierce Downer, and there's an excellent uh, narrative in from the property owners in the packet. Uh, this is the original parcel that's there. The original portion of the house is outlined here in red, and there's a couple of additions, one from the 70s, one from the 1980s in the back. Uh, the house still qualifies as historic based on the designation that it's uh, Pierce Downer's original farmstead. Here's a picture from the late 1800s. Uh, this is taken from the south. Seeley Avenue is actually on the left side of the screen where the one-story kitchen addition was. So when the house was originally built, it was oriented to the east because that's how you get to Plank Road. Uh, this is a picture from 1905, again, showing the east side. And this would be where the addition is now. And then this is a picture from 1968. So between 1909 and 1924, uh, part of the Downer Farm was sold off uh, to the Arthur McIntosh. They subdivided the property, built Seeley Avenue and other streets in the area, which in, in, in essence made the back kitchen have to be torn off. And then the house was reoriented reoriented to face Sealy. Uh, and then this is a current picture, so you see the home now. It's in a great condition in the front, uh, still maintains its significance. Here's another close-up view of the home uh, with some of the detailing. Uh, little has changed. The homeowners have added some hardy boards to make it appear uh, more of a historic uh, front facade there. Uh, and then again, this is the cellar door. This is the entrance to the cellar. Uh, this was a stop on the Underground Railroad, so these uh, cellar Cellar entrances has some significance as well in terms of uh, bringing in freed slaves uh, into the area here. So uh, with the two criteria, obviously over 50 years of age, and then uh, Pierce Downer, uh, not much more I can say about that other than his pictures on the wall and we work in Downers Grove. So uh, I don't know if there's any other questions for me. Uh, I can answer those for you tonight as well. OK, any council members have any comments or questions? Very exciting. So how many are we up to, Landmark Homes now? I should know off the top of my head, but I don't. How many are we up to? So we did nine last year. This would be number 10. And then there's uh, two before the Architectural Design Review Board uh, in their February meeting. So that would be before you in March, hopefully. And so that would be a total of uh, 13, if I'm doing my math correct, with the two other ones from 06 and 07. A very important way to help um, educate the entire community about what really is a longstanding history mm -hmm. that goes back well, now into a th we're, we're, we're well into a third century. Not completed with third century, but, but, but we're into it. Um, with that, um, is there anybody from the audience? This time we have somebody. Uh, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, Rich Calavani, 6825 Camden, representing Friends of the Edwards House. Uh, this is kind of like a golden moment uh, for us. Uh, uh, having the presentation of the founders' uh, home, um, and th there were uh, other people involved uh, in this process. Uh, Mayor Tully uh, reached out to the the Frigos to say, "Is this something you might consider?" And they contemplating it. Uh, Mark Reagan uh, uh, worked with Art Frigo, knew them, and kind of reminded him from time to time, "Hey, you still thinking of landmarking?" And then Amy Gaston and I stopped off to drop off a packet inviting them to the November 12th landmarking uh, event, and. We got the thrill of having them invite us into the home. Would you like to come in? I said, is that a trick question? So it was just a delightful place. And I think some things that occurred to me is just how solid the home was, just this feeling of, of you know, they're just a real solid, neat home. And, um, and they've done thoughtful uh, additions to it. So it kind of proved the point that you can add on to historic home, and, uh, but you can still landmark the, uh, the older portion of it. And the fact that uh, the Frigos have cared for this home, uh, kept newspaper articles over the years, um, you, you know, it's just kind of really exciting. And then there was uh, really a lot of misunderstanding. People just didn't know in the community that this house wasn't, wasn't protected. So it's kind of like part of the, the trifecta of places we'd like to see, like the, the uh, blacksmith shop, uh, Tivoli, places that are really iconic, uh, the museum building, things, things like that. So we're just really thrilled for the Frigos. Um, they were selfless enough, uh, knew it, knowing that uh, they couldn't be here because they're traveling uh, for the month of February, but they still wanted this to move forward because it was really, uh, really important uh, to them. So uh, we just congratulate them, and we urge other, other individuals to move forward and, and landmark their historic homes as well. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening. Amy Gasson, 5320 Benton Avenue. I'm here tonight um, also representing the Downers Grove Historical Society. Um, so I'm speaking on behalf of them and also my husband Dave who couldn't be here tonight. The most difficult part of landmarking your home is making the decision to do it. And we'd like to thank the Frigos for um, deciding to landmark their home. Um, Rich kind of mentioned this, but it was interesting to me that as the signs went up for the public hearing, so many people said, I thought that was already landmarked. So in a way, it was kind of an unof it is an unofficial landmark, so it's exciting that that's going to get an official designation soon. Um, this is truly a gift to the community, and we are so fortunate that our founder's home is owned by the Frigos and that they are um, going forward and taking this initiative. So again, we really appreciate their efforts. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wish to make a comment? I do want to say that um, I, I agree with the comment that this is a golden moment, but more correctly, this meeting this evening is the eve of the golden moment. And as a consequence, you know, I may not, we may not wax as eloquently as we will next week when the vote becomes official. And then next week we'll have the entire council here. I know Mayor Tully has been very, very instrumental in accomplishing this. So, um, you know, we'll defer to many of his wonderful comments about, about how, how, how this process goes. So I don't want to shortchange the eve of the golden moment, but that's what we're really doing tonight. This is a very exciting thing, and we're really, really, really looking forward to have this happening and have historic preservation continue with a great many homes to come in the future. Uh, and unless anybody else wants to add anything, I'd ask staff, is there anything else to add to the first reading? That concludes our first reading tonight, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're just flying right along here. So now we move to the mayor's report, which I guess would be the Mayor Pro Tem's report, and I have no report. Let's return to the manager's report. Just a <laughs> little bit of information. We had planned on a slightly longer introduction to the 2017 long range plan, but given a couple of absences, we will hold off on the presentation of one of the issues. But I will take a minute to give you some background and the community some background on long range planning. Um, the long-range plan is a combination of strategic planning and long-range financial planning. So our version of this is both financially focused and results or outcome-driven uh, combination, hence the name long-range planning. It establishes our village goals. It identifies trends and issues that are likely to affect the future of our village for the short, medium, and long term. It also identifies priority action items, as designated uh, by the council, which in turn creates for us a two-year work plan that we can measure our success against. And this plan, when it all comes together, serves as a guide for not only our annual budget process, but policy decisions that are made by this council throughout the years, and the daily operational decisions that are made by staff. So this is a very important document that guides policy and daily operations at all levels in the village government. This is our analogy of work. We like to call our flight analogy. Um, and it talks about at what level are we working. Day-to-day -day operations are at the runway level. And the broadest purpose and vision type of discussions are at the 50,000 foot level. As you know, the long range plan focuses at work. It's work at the 30,000 to 40,000 foot level. So we're definitely dealing with big picture items that eventually translate into daily work. Uh, we have a unique opportunity this year, given the uncontested nature of the Village Council April election, we know now that the council that is seated here will serve through 2019. And usually we wait until May to start our long range planning efforts when a new council is seated. But since the council is here now, we're starting now. This year's long range plan will run from February through April. Uh, in April is when we look at uh, setting the priority action items. What this really does for us is it gives us more time to do the work on the priority action items that the council directs. <coughs> I just put up on the screen uh, a list of our five village goals. These have remained largely unchanged. There's been small changes, but largely unchanged over the last eight to 10 years. They have served us well. I think all council members are quite familiar with these uh, long range planning goals. There are four issues that staff has identified that we will present uh, in February and March over a series of meetings. So we will present the first two other post employment benefit uh, unfunded liabilities. 
and concerns about general fund sustainability at an upcoming meeting later this month or early in March. So with that, that's just a brief background and introduction about long range planning. And when we have a full council, we'll dive into the issues that we will present. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. I just want to take a moment now and offer a comment about this. Um, is that uh, the, the trends or issues that staff is raising are the issues that staff believes that we should address. But each of us are perfectly free to raise our own long-range planning goals as well. So, so we're certainly not limited. Those are very important issues we have to, I, I believe we have to address. That's for all of us to decide collectively. But that doesn't mean that that's the universe of, of, of topics that, we, that we, can, we, we can go into. And we'll, we'll, talk about more, we'll talk more about that as, as we move forward. I also want to make sure people watching at home too know that um, you know, the, the, the long-range planning is more open-ended than what we're talking about right now with the goal that, you know, a April, we'll, 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 we should have this pretty much wrapped up as our goal. Um, anybody else have any comments they wish to make about this? You know, it, 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 I think next week and the week after, it's going to start getting, we're really kind of calm this evening. And, and, and I, I doubt that'll continue. This is the calm before this. <laughs> Not that things won't work out well. We'll, we'll, you know, we, we, we will resolve everything civilly and cordially, but there'll be much, much more to talk about than we do this evening. There's a lot, we, a lot more to come. To that end, we invite participation from every member of the community as well. So look for these on upcoming agendas. Okay. And that ends our manager's report. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we move now to council member reports. Member Earl, Commissioner Earl. Yes, I have a report about the library. Um, since we were talking strategic plan just a minute ago, the library, the month of February, the library is kicking off their strategic planning for 2017. It's um, basically going to be framing what they're going to be doing for the next three years. Um, they will be having focus groups starting this Thursday at 7 p.m., February 9th, Thursday at 7 p.m., uh, Saturday the 11th um, into Tuesday the 21st at um, 7 p.m. again, Thursday uh, the 23rd at 11 a.m., Friday the 24th at 2 p.m., and Sunday the 26th at 2 p.m. So there's a little something for everybody, mornings, afternoons, days, weekends. Uh, um, if you're unavailable for any of those times, there is also an online survey. Um, so if you um, have interest in your library and what they've been doing and what they're going to be doing next, um, they invite you to share their, your thoughts with them at uh, one of the uh, in-person focus groups or online. Um, so uh, that's all I have. Oh, and they did exceed their million items checked out, but um, I'm, I'm not at liberty to say how many above. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that news will be forthcoming. So congratulations to the library on a, a very successful 2016. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Jose? No report, thank you. Commissioner Waldeck? No report, Mayor Pro Tem. Commissioner Wallace? No report, Mayor Pro Tem, thank you. Does anybody have any more business? <laughs> With that, the, the chair will invite a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're adjourned. <laughs>